All right, guys, let's talk about page in review. So what I did in the last video is really was about preparing these ribs. I talked about trying to get them all flat and try to get out rid of that oil canning. I wasn't real successful in all honesty, but I have put on the bottom skin and the, the back rib part here. And most of that went away entirely. I feel, feel like once I put whatever goes here, which I wasn't able to see what it was immediately, it will go away entirely. I won't have any problem with that. You have to put together some seatbelt fastener ribs. There's four of them on the back here, super easy. You're basically just assembling four pieces into an, a sub-assembly. The one thing that I would do differently next time is I definitely, the plans say to work out in. I, I disagree with that. I think you need to work in, out. Uh, start with these center ribs and work your way outward because otherwise it gets real awkward. Uh, these were the last two ribs I did, or. These were the last two ribs I did, and I actually had to put the shop heads on the opposite side because I couldn't get to it any other way. It was really awkward. So if I had just done from in to out, it wouldn't have been anywhere near as awkward. Um, a lot of times they give you a direction like that because you want to avoid any imparting a twist, like in your wings, in your flaps, in your airlines, etc. You're not going to impart a twist here, so I'm not really sure why they have you work out to in. If anyone knows, please comment down below. Uh, but honestly, I think working in to out would be just as fine and you would be a, you know, have immediate access to all the bits. Other than that, everything was done. Uh, the only thing that might be con considered tricky on this one is you have to make sure to not put these guys on until you fix this part to this part. And that's because the rivets that put these together are actually under this, not part of this. And you have to countersink them and get them in there. Like I said, this was probably the mo one of the most complicated pages I've done so far uh, in the build. Not hard, just followed the instructions. Other than that, I think we're good to go. The next step is me going to be putting this piece on uh, the back, which will go here, somehow here, <laughs> and then there will be more uh, ribs out here. So this part is getting large and long. So uh, I may have to hurry up on getting my various uh, table construction thing that I want to do done pretty quick. So that's where we're at. And that's what's going to happen in this video is continuing with all the things. So here in the background, you can see that I'm working on that uh, aft uh, rib subassembly, riveting all those ribs together to that stiff bar across the back. Um, it was a little bit of pain in the ass because you just kind of got to reach in there and grab it and, you know, do the work, but it's not too bad. Um, and then I start hanging the skins on, that bottom skin uh, for the fuselage. It's, it's, it's a thicker skin. I think it's thicker. It feels thicker anyways. Um, which really firmed everything up, and I talked to that in a minute. And then eventually you see me standing up on the table trying to hang it, uh, which is not convenient at all. You have zero access, uh, and I have solved that through uh, putting my whole rig together down on that platform I purchased, which again, I talked to in a bit. So that's what you see going on here. So a couple things spring to mind looking at the beast here. Um, one is that this is unwieldy as hell, right? Um, it's really tall. Uh, and as you saw in a little bit ago that I was having to stand on this table to get up there and hook stuff up, that's not gonna work. Um, I need access to both sides and I don't have access easy over here. So um, I'm probably, I'm, well, I'm thinking about building a very small stand that is, you know, a foot maybe wide. Yeah, like 12 inches wide that it would sit on and I would bolt it to or clamp it down to. Right now I've got it clamped down on the other side so it won't fall over. But like 12 inches wide and then like good splayed legs that are you know, half the height of this, so I'll have full access. It means when I'm working down here, I'm gonna have to actually probably get down on my knees or at least sit in a chair or something to get down to it. That's okay. Uh, that's better than having to climb up on this table and work on it. So um, might be, you know, I talked about making, doing some woodworking to build a buggy or cart to put this thing on, you know, but that's, that's when this is done and I can lay it down. I have to get to that point. So I think I'm gonna have to build a short, dual like invention to 
bolt this to so I can actually have something that's uh, a little more wieldy and able to work with. And now I need to admit to a mistake. Um, so early couple, it might have been last video, I forget which video, I do these out of order, I never know what's in what video. Um, I had said that I put all the skin on and everything was already all lined up and it was all, all perfect and it had said in the plans that you need to flute the ribs to make sure they uh, they line up. Well, I didn't have to do any fluting because all the ribs, lined, uh, all the ribs lined up already. Um, yeah, all of these inner ribs lined up beautifully. These outer ribs do not. Um, these, this one on this side and then this one on this side are bad, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, these are okay, it's ever so slight, but on the other side, it's a real problem. Um, so this rib out here actually needs to be bent out, and I didn't pay attention. If I hold up a, a, a straight rule against that hole and this hole, you can see here in the middle that those holes curve. This whole rib kind of has to be pulled outward so that uh, that curve is there. Uh, well, the way you do that is with the fluting tool. So I'm going to have to take this skin off, and since this rib is basically already riveted in place, I'm going to have to flute it from the inside, which is no big deal. I have access. So I'm going to have to pull the skin off, do some fluting on this rib on the far one, uh, and then put the skin back on to make sure that we line up. That is something you have to do a lot, is put skin on, take skin off, put skin on, take skin off. So that's, that's the next major thing I'm gonna do, but I gotta, I gotta solve the cart problem first. Day two. Okay, uh, so this was kind of much ado about nothing. Uh, so what I had said is that uh, I didn't pay attention, basically, when I put the skin on last time in the last video, uh, to the holes, you know, lining up the holes uh, in the skin with the holes in the ribs. I said they all lined up automatically. I didn't have to do anything, and that was actually inaccurate. This outermost rib didn't line up once I got in there. I, I just didn't notice because I was focusing on all the internal ribs, and I did not notice this out outer rib didn't line up. And that's because there's a curve here. Well, I've gone through and I've added the um, flutes on the this particular rib down here and now they all line up. <coughs> it's it lines up a little bit better when you know when I when I shift everything else. There's only a couple Clecos holding in so it's a little wobbly on my table. But this rib now lines up perfectly. I, I didn't have, uh, didn't do the other side yet. I'll show you what that looks like, pro, you know, before and after in a photo. Um, I did have to drill out these two rivets up here. So at this stage, you affix this piece to uh, this piece and to the rib that's under here with two rivets, just kind of as a temporary attachment while you do everything else. I say temporary, it's permanent, but uh, I had to drill those two out so that I could lay this rib out. So you can see here when, I, when I've got the skin off, the, the fluting that I had to apply, again, I had to pull these two rivets out that I've got cleat out on this, and I just laid the whole thing out and then worked it. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't do it you know, this way, which would have been great if I could have just put this in here like this, but that would have made the flutes go the wrong direction. Uh, and apparently they don't make backwards fluting tools, or at least I couldn't find one. Um, I mean, do it right the first time, you don't need a second tool. Uh, I couldn't pull the whole thing out because it would have required me drilling out three rivets in here that I just didn't want to have to drill out. So just laying it out a little bit to give me access to work with it was just fine. Laid it back in, we're good to go. So uh, at this point, I'm going to look real closely at this rib because if there's kind of a curve here, there may be a curve here. I need to put all the Clecos back in, uh, put the skin in, put the Clecos back in and check this rib. And I think there is an ever so slight curve so I'll probably be doing that so it's gonna be a lot of me putting putting this bottom skin on taking it off put it on take it off uh, while you get everything but just to be clear this rib for sure needs to be fluted in order to match up to the skin you don't have to do it super deep but just enough to give it a, that that banana curve so now I'm gonna go work on the other side
one eternity later. Okay, guys. Well, here we go. Um, I've got the bottom skins on. There's two of them. There's the upper one and this lower one. I've got all the Clecos in where there is actually a rib on the backside. This area down here, I've got a bunch of stiffeners that I have to put in on the other side, obviously. So I've got to do that yet. But what I wanted to show you, which is really cool, is this curve, this, this rib out here and this one down here, both had to be fluted so that the the holes in the flange of the ribs met up with the holes in the skin. So I did lie to you. Uh, all the ribs didn't meet up with the skin perfectly. I just had a momentary lapse. Uh, and so now I have fixed that. Got it. Everything is all happy and clico together. Uh, and now this part is, I mean, it's stout, it's stiff. So, um, I'm gonna now get these stiffeners cleaned up because these are sharp as hell. Gonna go take these over and deburr them. Uh, by the way, I didn't show you or show me putting all these Clecos in because I figured it was the last damn thing you needed to do or needed to watch. But I'm gonna clean these up, get these attached on the other side, uh, and then I'm gonna go through and do all of the match drilling. There's like 4,000 holes. So I'm gonna go through and do all that. Then I'm gonna move all the Clecos down one and do it again. So that's what's coming up next. One incredibly painful amount of time later. Um, so what you're watching me work on in the background is uh, clecoing up the skin, drilling all the holes common between the ribs and the skin, moving the clecos down and doing it again. There are 954 holes in that skin, not including the nut plates on the far side. My hands are smoked. Uh, I just finished it and uh, the drill actually ran out of power. So I'm not even done yet. I have to finish doing uh, the lower area again. I've already moved all the clecos. I just got to finish it up, but Ooh, Jason's hands are sore. Um, so sometimes maybe getting that pneumatic squeezers or, or rivet puller is not a bad idea. But so there you go, uh, working on that. <clears throat> um, not a big deal. I did do every other hole uh, with regards to the rivets. A lot of, or, uh, uh, Clecos rather. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll do like every third hole and then just, you know, drill the two in between. So it's less. Uh, less Clecos. The reason I went every other hole on this one is because this is an incredibly important stage. This is, you know, the fuselage uh, skin. The skin is slightly thicker to, to because it imparts a lot of the stability of the part as a whole. Like I said, it is really stout and super stiff. I wanted to make sure that I Clecoed that thing up uh, exactly as it should and drilled those or, uh, drilled those holes every other one exactly as you're supposed to because I just didn't want to screw it up. I, I, I want it to be right. So uh, that's what I've done. Uh, also, the other thing is I have bought a uh, platform. You can see I'm standing on it in the back a, couple, a little bit here. Here's a picture of it. Basically, this is an adjustable platform that I found at Home Depot, uh, or you probably can get them in any big box stores. They go, they range from like $30 up to like $300. It's kind of a painter's platform. Really useful, actually. Um, I got a slightly beefier one. That one costs like $120. Um, but I like it. The fact that, you know, it's adjustable from 20 inches up to uh, 30 inches and the, the legs can be wider at the bottom. It's perfect. And I'll be able to transfer the whole part over to that, clamp it down, and it will solve all the problems. I don't have to create anything out of wood. I'm just going to use that. And it's something that I will continue to use because it's really handy. So uh, that's how I solved that. So now I'm going to let my drill charge and get back to drilling. Anyways, guys, that's where I'm going to end this one. Thank you all very much. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, if you click that thumbs up button, it helps my rankings. And if you want to get notified every, every time I put out a new video, click that subscribe and then the bell icon, you'll get notification. If you want to help support this channel, if you'll jump over to my Patreon page for as little as a dollar a month, you can help support me and you get other content. I've started to do 360 videos and other stuff over there. Um, and finally, if you really want to support me, when you order your Vans kit, if you put my builder number, which is down in the comments, on the reference sheet when you receive your kit, uh, Vans sends me a hundred bucks. Just a way of saying thank you. Anyway, guys, thanks a bunch. See you next time.